Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to talk about the Easy EFI retrofit on the 280Z project. So now that I'm back from SEMA, I managed to get a chance to finish up the basic installation of the Easy EFI on the 280Z. Uh, before I flew out, I ran into some issues during my projects that I didn't want to keep fixing piecemeal on this car. So I decided to order the retrofit kit and get started. The kit came in right before I flew out to SEMA. So I had enough time to run the wiring, install the sensors, get some of the basics done, and then I had to jump on a plane and fly out. When I got back, I finished wiring up power, ran the rest of the harnesses, kind of cleaned it up a bit, got the rest of the fuel system sorted because I also installed the new fuel injection rail and I also installed the new fuel injectors that are O-ring based. I also went ahead and dialed in the fuel pressure. On the very first crank, this system fired up and ran flawlessly. So from a total functionality standpoint, I would have to give it a thumbs up. It actually probably ran and was easier to configure than the Sniper EFI unit I have on the Mustang. Now, from a total kit standpoint and installation, I have to give it about a three or four out of five because the universal wiring harness is for a V8 car and does not run well in this Z without either adapting it or putting the entire fan out of wires really close to a hot exhaust. The second issue I have with this system is that a lot of the instructions are partial instructions. They give you sort of a check sheet of, of ideas of things you should make sure you're doing when you install the kit. And the kit comes with a universal installation description, but there is no single source specific to the Z. So you have to do a lot of cross-referencing and you have to kind of have a decent idea of what the wiring's like already on the car you're working with. One item in particular is the fuel pump. I wasn't sure if there was going to be another fuel relay set up to replace everything for the Z car's fuel relay, or if there was a way to tie into the existing fuel relay. Turns out, neither one was true. You just leave the fuel relay and everything the way it is, but it will only be fully engaged when the car is cranking and running. Downside to that is the computer does not have control over the fuel pump, which is kind of strange, because now you have a situation where the fuel pump can continue pumping fuel even though the computer would like the, com the car to stop. So the only way the car can actually be stopped is with the ignition shut down, which isn't ideal if you want to be able to actually run the fuel out. That's not a catastrophic issue, but I will probably be going back and putting in a different relay triggered by the computer. The computer harness does come with a grounding out control line for triggering a relay that you can use for a fuel pump, as well as a three wire adapter that's specific to an easy, I, easy EFI retrofit fuel pump kit. So I don't know which one I'll go with, but I'll probably be switching over to one of those. Another issue with the universal wiring harness is the length of the runs to the injectors. The lengths are fine for a V8 car, horrible for a straight six car. So you end up with the entire fan out of all the sensor wires and the fuel injection wires pushed very close to either the hot exhaust or up on top of your intake manifold, which is very unattractive. They also have it set up so that the fuel injector harnesses Y out and then Y out again, but the inner injector connectors are very, very short to the wires and the others are very long to accommodate a V8. This means both sets of wires actually have to be drug in there very close and then the centers have to be connected and you have extra wire on the ends. It's not ideal, but you can hide the wire. I also don't necessarily like the construction of the wiring harness. It's not at all what you would expect for a professional wiring harness. The crimps seem good and the runs and the ends seem good, but they're not twisted, they're not heat shrinked, and they're nothing like what you would expect from wiring specialties or some other specific wiring harness maker. It's simply straight wires run to plugs with the corrugated plastic protector slit over them. At each, they're not even wrapped down that length, they're just coiled at each end with tape. I assume in case you want to reroute the wires yourself, 
which you may well want to do if you want to make this look good. Otherwise, the installation is pretty straightforward minus the details of where certain sensors go, how they get hooked up. An example is you have to make sure that if you're keeping the existing idle air control air warm-up system on the 280Z, you find another suitably large connection to supply your IACV air so that the computer can bypass the throttle plate. You also need to remember to find this little adapter in the kit, which you won't find any info for except for on a secondary sheet that comes from Z-Depot that is actually for adapting your coolant sensor to the engine. That's sort of important. There's also another adapter that's really important that is specifically to adapt from your coil signal to the computer. It's a little box with a few wires coming off of it that you must actually install first, connect that to the coil, ground it out, and then connect the ECU wiring harness to that. If you do not, they warn you that it can be damaged by the signal from the coil. So make sure you read all of the instructions end to end before you put it together. Once you've got the system installed, all I gave it was a few good cranks and the system fired right up and ran perfect. In fact, before it even started learning, it ran much better than my old factory system did. Additionally, this system allows you to configure for larger injectors. It allows you to change things out for fuel pressure. So you have a lot wider range of what kind of engine modifications you can support here. For right now, I don't have an exhaust on the car still. I just clamped this temporary exhaust on so that the car wasn't deafeningly loud with the new headers. I will be getting an exhaust made up and installed this week. So hopefully in the next week or two, I can spend some time driving the car, letting it learn, and I will do another update on how the system is working after a few hundred miles. So thank you all for watching this video. I'm sorry I couldn't do a full installation how-to because I just had too many things in the schedule. But if you have any questions specific about this kit, just ask them in the comments. And until next time, thank you for watching.